Hello, beautiful people. Yo, 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 what it do? Today we're throwing it back to ED1. I kid you not, this dungeon is the cat's pajamas. It's all that and a bag of chips. You can make hella skrilla farming ancient scales here, so let's see how to secure that bag. Sit back, chillax, and let's go over the basics. The totally tubular temple of Amanishi is located on, you guessed it, the island of Amanishi. Inside, poor Seiryu, the flyest serpent in all of Gelenor, is trapped by the Kool-Aid drinking freaks. We need to go in there and free our homie. On the way to free our home dog Seiryu, we'll meet lots of friends. There's hella mobs all over the place, ready to open up a can of whoop ass on us. They pack a mean punch, so make sure to do big booty damage and kill them quickly. The elite Sotopana with horns are healers, so keep that in mind. There are two mobs that are built different. The Hanto cell swords are bad to the bone, b b, -b bad These sucka MCs do a melee death spin that will send you to hell faster than you can say get jiggy with it. Dying to this is an achievement, but you do you. Next, there are the Death Lotus Rogues. These funky fresh assassins have a range attack that does not feel good. You can always use Protect Prayers and Devotion to protect yourself from these two bogus bad guys. There is also a metric crap ton of mini bosses in this dungeon. The first section of the dungeon is absolutely fantabulous for farming tokens because up to five minis can spawn at the same time. Token farming has never been easier thanks to this posse of wannabe bosses. Finally, there are three bosses. The Sanctum Guardian, Masuda, and our home skillet Seryu who got mixed in with the wrong crowd. Now that we know the main characters, let's see what we're packing. If you've seen any of my totally relatable guides before, you already know I'm bringing my Sea Singer in Tier 85 Wand and Orb. It's the bomb.com. Absolute Legends PVM was scavenging and looting. If you disagree, talk to the hand. You can do this dungeon with any style, but the fight is a little spicier with melee. You don't really need anything special here. If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge an ED1 mechanic. I'm even going to use air spells and make it extra relatable. Make sure you have a shield and everything else is up to you. Weapon poison does work on everything except Daddy Seiryu. I'm using Ripper Demon, but feel free to yak it up. Now that we have our preset, let's get crunk. Buff up and head over to the temple. This is a solo guide, but you can also use this guide to go with your home biscuits. Run down the stairs, search over to the corner, and kill the four mobs that are standing by the barrier. After you're done killing these mobs, go down the stairs and search all the way to the end of the hallway. You're going to go to the corner, and you're going to group up the melee mob. Use your AoE attacks, throw a Vuln Bomb, do whatever you have to do. This dungeon involves a lot of hit and run. This is the only time that that's a good thing. The bosses look tough, but they're not about that life. After the melee mob, turn the corner and kill the three NPCs in front of the barrier. If you have any bleeds, make sure to use freedom. Nobody likes to bleed out. When you're done, run down the stairs and go through the door. You're doing great, sweetie. On the other side of the door, it's time to throw down against five NPCs that are blocking our path. Move, mage, get out the way. Get out the way, mage, get out the way. Every time I make a boss guide, I say to myself, I'm not gonna sing or rap in this one, and uh, yeah, I can't help myself, I'm sorry. After you kill these scrubs, hug the right or left wall. It doesn't matter which. You do you, boo-boo. I go right because right is right. That's a saying, right? Right. Hugging the wall allows us to only aggro three of the mobs here. Totally radical, right? I hope you went to surge school. Now we're going to run all the way to the end of this section, surging on the straights like the straight up legend you are. Facts. Ignore the dragons even though they're hitting on you. No one likes to be bothered on a casual mob killing spree. Send the three NPCs by the barrier to hell and teleport out. Like I said, hit and run. Charge up, fill up, and get on up out of PVM hub. It's clobbering time. Just a little note, if you take too long to get down to Sanctum after entering the dungeon again, the dragons start flying around and you'll have to teleport out and enter yet again. Lame. I know this won't happen to you though because you're fast day of boy. Let's go take down Sanctum Guardian. This couch potato doesn't move, she just attacks you with range from the comfort of her hole. Here's one auto attack, here's two, three, four, now melee hit, one auto attack. And now spinny water. You can stay on the left side of the room and use defensives like resonance or reflect if you're feeling froggy like I did here. One auto attack, bar over my head, another auto attack, and then the melee hit. 
Here I'm going to show you how you can move right to avoid the water attack completely and not have to rely on defensives. This is a very safe way to do the fight. Just make sure you move back to the left when the water attack is done. As you can see, the person with the bar drops hot fire in the room. If you're in a group, it's random. Move to a spot on the left that's away from where everyone's standing and fire drops when the bar empties. Resonance, debilitate, and reflect all work to reduce the damage that you take from the water attack. And if you want to play it safe, just move over to the right and make sure not to step in the fire that you dropped on the ground because it does not feel good. Finally, every few rotations, the boss spawns some crab friends. Total buzzkill. All these mechanics repeat until you kick this scrub to the curb. You can deal with the crab friends, but honestly, I would just ignore them. They don't really do that much damage. Just be careful trying to res with the crab friends on the ground because they can snipe your res and send you to death's office. So much fun. It's also worth mentioning that if you really hit this fight, you can use a fishy treat on the boss to completely skip it. And that's it. It's time to hit and run again. I'm starting to feel like I might be a bad influence. Run down the stairs, but wait for the Honto sellsword to pass. That dude is bad vibes and we don't want none of that smoke. There are two cloak zealots on top of the stairs in front of the barrier that we need to get rid of. That's what they get for standing in our way. Mess with the world guardian, you get the horns. Next, we're going to run into three Death Lotus rogues. You can ignore them if you're a straight G, but I like to kill them to avoid memes. If you don't kill them quickly, pray range and use devotion or take a trip to death's office. It's up to you. There's three cloaked zealots near the barrier waiting to catch these hands. After they're gone, we run to the left. This time, the side does matter. We're going to ignore everything that we see and kill the cloaked zealots that are in front of the barriers. I hope you love cardio because this dungeon is all running. And it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. We went to the left because this is the side that we need to be on to get to the boss. You technically could have gone right, but why take the extra steps, you know? Kill the three cloaked zealots here, then run up the stairs and kill the zealot mob at the top. If you die before you unlock the next chest, you're going to have to run back here from Sanctum Guardian. This is what I like to call the walk of shame. But you're an absolute legend, so I know nothing's gonna happen. After dealing with these posers, we're going to go through the door. On the other side, kill the two hooligans in front of the barrier, then surge all the way to the end of the hall. Surging to the end will group up the NPCs and create a melee mob that you can then AoE out of existence. Just be careful if you aggro the cell swords; they are very spoicy. Next, we're going to hug the right or left wall again. It doesn't matter. I go right because right is right, a wise girl who totally didn't make that up once said. In the corner, there's a death lotus rogue. Ignore it or kill it, just listen to your heart. Then go to the corner and kill the cloak zealots. When the barrier opens, teleport out. Another classic hit and run, baby. Now we're at Masuda. This is low-key the hardest boss in the dungeon. Masuda is hella rude and has sent many adventurers to death's office. Not today, Satan. Today we're going to hang 10 and show him who the big kahuna really is. You're going to want to pray melee for the first part of the fight. Or don't and try to set the world record for fastest death in a boss instance. You'll get some range hits in the first part of the fight too, but just ignore them. They're wiggity whack. Masuda has a lot of attacks, but all you need to know is pray melee. After some auto attacks in the beginning, Masuda starts straight clowning and does the no-no death spin. Wait a few seconds and then use devotion. If you don't devotion, just run. Run, run as fast as you can. When the smoke starts popping off, just walk away from it. It hits with magic and Masuda also stomps the yard with magic. Just go stand by yourself, some alone time is good. When I solo, I lead our BFF up the stairs. Then when he starts his second death spin, I surge down the stairs and bring him to the edge of the platform. Make sure he stays here. If he's anywhere else, the fight gets spicy. When you get to 275,000 life points, our bestie jumps up in the air and contemplates his life. While he's sinking, water notes pop up around the room. For solo, ignore anything not on the lower platform where you're standing. Make sure you don't run out without protection if there's a lot of waters up top because you'll get yeeted to death's office. Always use protection prayers, boys and girls. 
You can also choose to run around and kill all the water notes. It's high key a little sweaty, but maybe you're into that sort of thing. This is a judgment free guide. If you're standing in melee distance when the waters die, you get a buff that decreases the damage of the magic attack that Masuda hit you with in the second part. Pretty gnarly. Eventually, Masuda snaps back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity, and he's back on the ground hitting us. Whoops, there I go again. I just can't help myself. When he jumps in the air, he hits you with the magic attack that hurts, but not in the good way. He then hits with range auto attacks. Because you're an absolute legend, you'll prayer switch when you're supposed to while Masuda is going postal. If you're not feeling tough as nails, just pray magic the whole time and eat through the range attacks. Yak gaming is ethical gaming. You can also use defensives like debilitate to reduce the damage taken. Just keep doing big booty DPS until Masuda is gonzo. Magic attack can happen after 3 range auto Autos, but this boss is tricky, 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 and he doesn't always do it at the same time. So if you're switching, pay attention. Let's go! It's tricky to DPS to DPS and watch the boss is tricky. It's tricky, 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 tricky. I've really got a problem, haven't I? And we outie. Eat up and make sure you have some adrenaline. Go down the stairs and we come face to face with the spiciest pillars west of the Mississippi. These pillars are straight G's, for shizzle for rizzle. Pray magic, run down, and kill the three pillars closest to the chest, and then bounce. Use devotion, reflect, debilitate, whatever you have to do to stay alive. These pillars are no joke. Go grab your finest preset, and let's go free our homeboy Seiryu. Seiryu hits with magic. You'll see a lot of life points on the boss, but just ignore it. You won't have to do all that big booty damage, but you totally could have if you had to because you're an absolute legend. Seiryu has a few mechanics that we should talk about. First, he has some stank ass breath that sucks you pretty hard. Res that hot dragon breath for some free health, use a defensive to decrease damage, or eat through it. You're a legend, nothing can take you down. Siryu also uses tendrils. When his tail hits the ground, pop lock and drop it on over a few steps and you'll be Gucci. Next, a yellow arrow is going to appear on the ground. After a few seconds, hands come out of the ground from that spot towards each person in the room. You could be the legend that you are and stand on the arrow to stop the hands from spawning. This is bad vibes. If you miss or get there late, the hands hit different. I would just slide over after they spawn and keep on keeping on. Avoiding your problems instead of facing them is a total mood. Finally, shadow hands spawn in the front of the arena and move towards the back in a V-shape as you can see on the left side of the room. Just boogie on over to the other side and you'll be good, fam. These mechanics repeat and a lot of them happen at the same time until you face Seryu at 7.19 million HP. Jump up to the platform. Now's the time to strike. There are three crystals on the collar that need to get wrecked so that we can free our home slice Seryu. Some shadow blobs spawn down below. If they reach Seiryu, they heal the crystals. Extra AF. You could jump down and kill them, but you're a legend who only does big booty damage. Kill the first crystal, wait for the uber heal, and then hit the second crystal. Easy. What I'm showing you right now is a very chill way to 3 cycle the boss in less than 10 minutes. Later I'll show you my rotation for a 2 cycle because it's very specific, but right now if you're 3 cycling you can just kinda chill and do whatever you want. You'll get yeeted off the top when the second set of blobs are on their way. Freedom and unleash on the blobs. Get ready for the stank breath and do your thing. All of these mechanics repeat until you kill the last crystal. Let me give you the tea while we're doing big booty damage. If you're having a hard time with the tendrils, make sure you're keeping an eye on Seiryu's tail in the left side corner. You can have any number of tendrils spawn. Don't sleep on them, they will hurt you. The max scale drop here is 110, and since each drop has a chance of doubling inside of elite dungeons, that could be 220 in one drop. Not a bad day at the office. Doing the quest Curse of the Blackstone is highly recommended. The rewards are delicious. You get 10% damage reduction inside of elite dungeons 1 through 3, and you also are allowed to then buy the ED chest upgrade from Brill for 750,000 tokens. This upgrade lets you bank inside of elite dungeons at the chest and allows you to always have 20% chance to double loot even with auto collect on. This is what dreams are made of. The HP on the crystals does scale with group size which is totally gnarly. And finally, having Dominion Mines helps with big booty damage on the crystals, but they are definitely not necessary as you can see. I also usually bring Dreadnips when I solo. I'll show you all this later. Dress your inventory up or down however you want. As long as you're too legit to quit, you'll get this kill. 
let's watch the rest of the kill, think about rotations, and manifest big scale drops. Here comes the uber heal on the crystal. After it's done, I'm going to do a little bit of damage, as much as I can, before I get kicked off. I'm going to give you a play-by-play -play so you can see what I'm doing. Now that I've been needed, I'm going to use freedom to get rid of the stun and immediately use devotion so that way I don't have to worry about anything that hits me if my HP is a little low. I finish killing the blobs, then I'm going to set up my sunshine, put on my debuffs, my Vuln, and my guthics. Here comes the arrow hands, I'm going to step over to the right. Tendrils, I moved over to the left. This time I just let the stank breath hit me because my HP was high and then I moved off from the tendrils. Some shadow hands are coming from the front of the room, so I'm going to move to the right to avoid getting hit. I ate through the stank breath again because I've got plenty of food left, then I moved to the left to avoid the tendrils and the shadow hands. I waited for the shadow line hands to spawn and then moved forward a little bit, and then I immediately moved to the left to avoid the tendrils. Again, I'm just going to eat through the stank breath because I've got so much food left. As you can see, you get tendrils randomly and pretty frequently. Here I got them twice in a row, which is just not cool. I'm going to move to the left side of the arena to avoid the hands that are spawning because there's just a lot of nope going on the right side of the room. Now that I phase, I'm going to jump up on the platform and take care of that last crystal that I have. And now, all you have to do is what you do best, big booty DPS. Just make sure to kill the crystal before the uber heal happens and you're good to go. And that's it! Booyah! You're the bomb diggity! You freed your homie G! Now I'll go over my strategy for doing a 2 cycle with my normal gear. Everything that I do is the same until I get up to the crystals. My sunshine rotation was overkill for the first crystal, I really didn't need all that, and then I found that I was lacking by the time I got to the second crystal. So instead of starting with sunshine, I save the sunshine for the second crystal. I surge to the crystal after jumping up to drop mines. Then I send out a Dreadnip and apply my debuffs, Smoke Cloud, Vuln, and Guthix. I then use Tsunami and any threshold abilities that I have to kill the first crystal. Chain and Omni, Wild Magic, Asphyxiate, whatever I've got. After the first crystal is down, I surge to the second one so I'm ready for mines. I drop my Sunshine and build Adrenaline. I also apply my debuffs to the second crystal now. I do Guthix after the Uber Heal so that big booty damage isn't in vain. After the uber heal, I unleash all of my pent up anger on the crystal. As long as I leave it under 70,000 HP, I can easily 2 cycle. We can watch the rest of the kill, but that's really the only difference. When I go up, I start with the normal sunshine rotation and end the fight. The last thing that I want to point out is that when you're up with the crystals, you can totally soul split and get all of your HP back. I choose not to because I have a relic on that allows me to do more damage when my HP is low, so I like to juice. I'm a big juicer, baby. You'll actually notice that while I'm down off the platform, I try to get hit as much as I can and keep my HP pretty low so that way when I jump up on the platform, I can juice. I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing this because it is a little too spicy sometimes and I've ended up in death's office trying to juice more times than I can count. But it's definitely an exciting way to play and you're an absolute legend so I know you'll be fine. You can see I jump up, I surge over to the crystal, I drop my mines, I drop my sunshine, and that's basically all she wrote. Now that you're an ED1 spurt, go ahead and get that bread. Ancient scales are a great way to make bank and watching this guy gives you a 34% chance of getting 100 scales doubled. No cap. And that's the whole shebang. Thanks for watching. If you took anything away from this or you had a laugh, I love you long time if you hit that subscribe button. See you next time.